What becomes a broken heart here on Wixie 1260. Broadcasting live here at the Barney Fest, Gary Winter, Lisa Jordan in the house. We just saw Tim Conway. What an absolute amazing man. Oh Love my Tim. goodness gracious, that is great stuff. A lot of fun. Well, we have more great stuff here, and we have uh, more. We have another local television broadcast icon in with us. One of my favorite weathermen ever. The gold the man standard I of ever people. listened to. So. The gold. <laughs> Dick Goddard is joining us. It Mr. is so Goddard. nice to have you, Dick yes. Goddard. I knew you were coming apart, so I wanted to join you. Anyway, a little weather humor there. But <laughs> anyway, thanks for having me on. I've been doing this for a while, 52 years on the tubes. Uh, Dick, okay, listen, we had Tim Taylor in here a little while ago. He's out of jail? He is, yes. Oh. <laughs> he got out about... Uh, beloved Brillo head. I used to... He's on a furlough program. Right. They let him out about 11 o'clock this afternoon, but I think he yeah. has witness protection. Okay? Oh, he should have. <laughs> <laughs> but he has told us a ton of stories about you. Oh. Now, it's your turn. We're going to let you flip-flop. you got to tell us some things. Should we tell him what he told us about? Yeah, I'll let uh, about Oh, yeah. We, we it's about the day that you brought cats into uh, the studio to give away I'm and they got loose yeah. and yep. he's, he, he's ready to go on the air they're climbing up and the they're curtain. climbing up him uh -huh. his leg and Robin Swoboda and he's trying to do he's trying to do this news story he's got cats crawling up his leg oh yeah okay. okay. so did well, he ever do a turnabout did he ever get you back I mean because I th seem to think he would be the kind that could oh yeah what a good <laughs> guy he really is a great sense of humor and uh, but he's an anchor man exactly. I call him. <laughs> The poor man's Walter Cronkite. You don't remember Walter Cronkite? Oh, I certainly remember. Oh, yes, we do. Walter Cronkite. Um, yes, we great. talked about him. And Dorothy full time, but <laughs> oh, Big Red, yeah, what, yes. what a nice lady. I had a uh, roast for uh, Dorothy, and she could swear with the best of them. I loved her. <laughs> Dorothy, where I got it. No, I'm just kidding. Big Red, is that how? <laughs> well, I love Dorothy, so oh, that was kind of wouldn't? the reason I wanted to be in broadcasting with Dorothy. I watched her faithfully. They told as a me kid. at Channel Five they paid her off in. Uh, Gladiolas or some flower. I that can was, see that. Yeah, that, that would make sense. That's probably her, yes. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah, right. But no, I've been so lucky that people have tolerated my weather guessing for 52 years. How about that? That is amazing. It's amazing. And you're, well, you're, you're accurate. You're a better guesser than most people because uh, your, your forecasts seem to turn out the way it is. Well, I try to. The, the forecasts are always good. It's the weather. <laughs> that seems they were to just listen to you. <laughs> but I don't brag about the oh we're the most accurate or stuff like that. What a bunch of uh, taurine excrement that is. But uh, <laughs> weather is an estimate of probability. It'll never be any more than that. I mean, we're more accurate. When I was in the Air Force in the 50s, Weather Bureau in the uh, 60s, and the pilots who flew then will tell you the weather forecasts are much more accurate. But anyway, we blow a few. We've got to. If you want to be a great weather forecaster, don't come to Cleveland, Ohio. I would go to Yuma, Arizona. <laughs> yeah. Nothing ever happens. Things never change. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> did you want to always do this? Is this something no. that you always wanted to do? What, what did you want to do? Well, uh, here are my cartoons. This is the latest woolly bear I drew. Okay. And I draw new it every year. I wanted to be a cartoonist. Growing up, and my mom st saved a uh, drawing of Donald Duck when I was about five years old. It's a pretty good Donald Duck. I wanted to join Disney. I even had a chance after I graduated from Kent with a Bachelor of Fine Arts, sent stuff out to Disney at Anaheim. They wrote back, and I, if I could only find that letter, they said, yeah, come on, we'll like to talk to you. Well, that was, what, about seven years ago? <laughs> so I don't think the offer is still there. But I love the cartoon. So how did you get into weather then? What, what led oh. you that way? The Air Force. Uh, so uh, here comes the Korean War, the first of three wars that never should have been fought, as we now in retrospect realize that. But uh, anyway, I was in the military. I was Air Force. And I am uh, totally passive. Uh, and uh, I uh, began to, uh, I got my degree from Kent and figured I'd get into an art studio somewhere out of nowhere. I got to call him Channel 3 because uh, we did radio broadcasts out of the Akron Canton Weather Bureau office. They called me and said, do you want to try TV? I said, I can't do that. Uh, and I auditioned and I thought I was so bad they'd never offer me a job and I was ready to call Channel 3, KYW, and say, well, let's forget about it. And they called one day and said, you're it. I said, wow. And uh, we're going to sign, sign you to a 13-week contract. That's how sure they were I'd stick around.
13. And that was 52 weeks. years exactly. ago. Exactly. <laughs> um, you have a love for animals that I, I don't think I've ever seen anybody have the love for animals that you do. And you have promoted this um, taking care of animals, be kind to animals. Uh, what, um, I, I don't know, did you grow up with animals? What yeah. led, led you to this? I had the greatest parents in the world, and uh, they were very kind to their animals on our little farm south of uh, Green now. It was Greensburg then, uh, but I grew up, and by osmosis, I grew to appreciate the four-footed and the feathered friends, and I've carried that through. We're hoping to get a law passed now. They've named it Goddard's Law. I don't care what they call the thing. We just need to get an upgrade on the penalty for companion animal abuse in Ohio. Uh, we are 46 among all the states as far as the penalty for abusing companion animals. We had to exclude the farm vote because seven times they have uh, said, you can't do that. So we said, okay, farmers, be good to your animals. This is going to be aimed at the companion animals, and I hope we can get it passed. Okay. Well, good. I, it's, um, it's a worthy cause. And absolutely. We are very, very much in favor of uh, you know treating the animals well and uh we, we appreciate what you do for those those furry friends of ours thank you so much for that it's worked out, it's worked out very well and I, it, it seems it seems as though you are the face of animal rights in a, in a positive way at least uh, at least in our area um and the law that you're put goddard's law as, it, as it's been called um, does, that, does that give you some sense of satisfaction to know that you are making a difference? Well, I don't care again if they use my name. They could call it uh, Isaac Newton's Law of Gravity as far as I'm concerned. But we've got to up the penalty for companion animal abuse. Uh, and it's up to the judges, once somebody has been found guilty of that, to uh, pass judgment. And uh, if we could get it into a felony category, uh, that would be wonderful. That may be difficult, but we're going to up the... Uh, penalty for animal abuse in Ohio. Exactly right. We, we appreciate that again, and that's exactly right. Uh, that's the way it should go down. So let's hope that that does come through. We I'd like to talk about your uh, your broadcast career, now, it, it's special, especially your start in radio um, a, few, a couple of years ago, as it were. Um, what was um, what was that like? Well, it was, uh, we thought we were big deals down at the African Weather Bureau because, hey, we were on radio. <laughs> uh, WHBC in Canton, WADC in Akron. And uh, anyway, uh, that's how I fell into the job of uh, television, only because the general manager at Channel 3 at the time, KYW, heard me do a broadcast, and it evidently sounded like I had some idea about weather because back in the 50s on well you only had three networks abc cbs and nbc mm -hmm. and on the local stations channel three and five uh, one would have a comedian the other one would have a, a lady well endowed i might point out on television <laughs> that always helped and uh, another one uh, there was a magician on another channel so i was the first guy who actually knew what an isobar was that uh, was on television okay now, um, has, it, uh, has it amazed you that uh, while you've endured all these years on TV and you've seen, you've seen other uh, weather forecasters come and go, uh, I mean, there's, there's a whole list of them, but yet you remain. Does that amaze you? It, it truly does. I uh, always think uh, how incredibly uh, fortuitous that event when I first got on the air would be, and I figured 13 weeks will probably do it. And I love spoonerisms. I began with a spoonerism about croaking frogs. It, it came out croaking frogs, but it could have been worse. <laughs> could have been a lot worse than that. I love uh, those things that. Uh, where, where you, have you ever had? A, what's your best spoonerism? Never, huh? Uh, no. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, Gary's overmatched here. <laughs> when, yeah. Oh, look at the lady with blue hair. Yeah, that's a little Marge Simpson there going in. Hi, guys. How are you? Nice Be to high. see you today. Okay, but, but, Dick. Wooly Bear, yeah. the Wooly Bear Festival. Tell us about it. How did it get started? What What is that all about? I well, know it's been going for a long time. Yeah, we had number 41 in Vermilion uh, earlier this month, and we still had about 100,000 people. A threat of rain all day. It never happened. But uh, anyway, uh, I went with my daughter and my lady friend at the time, and uh, we were down in Hinkley at the Frog Jump uh, competition. Coming back, I told my then 10-year-old daughter, why don't we do a woolly bear caterpillar festival? We'll race caterpillars 
And if you want to watch paint dry, that's the way it works sometimes. <laughs> but anyway, she said, why not? And with Neil Zerker's help, I said, you've got to find three lady screwballs out there who are willing to do a worm festival. And we are the first in the country. Now there are about a half a dozen uh, woolly bear or woolly worm festivals around the country. We make money for animals. And uh, it has really taken off to get 100,000 people in Vermilion, as we do every fall, it is truly incredible. Make, they make a lot of money for animals and the volunteer groups in Vermilion, and that's another thing uh, that I, I'm kind of proud of, having gotten it started. But Big Chuck, Little John are out there every year, mm -hmm. and a lot of people from uh, television show up for the Woolly Bear. And this year, now I'm going to. Well, I, I mentioned the other night. The woolly bear indicates it's going to get colder and it's going to snow. So you've got an exclusive. Uh, snow. No. Uh, I hate uh, winter. Uh, uh, we love you anyway. <laughs> yeah, you we too. all keep staying here, Dick. That's the thing. We're all and that's it. Northeast Ohio. <laughs> um, you know, even even when you even when you leave the area or even go on vacation, it's like I need I need Goddard's forecast. I need I gotta have Goddard's forecast. Are you gonna write any more books? Now, I just finished uh, one, and I'm writing another one that will come out about Mother's Day, based totally on animals. And as you see, my woolly bear decal that I created this year with Joe Wood of our art department, it says, be kind to all animals. And that's my goal in life. Mm -hmm. Be good to the poor folks, uh, the feathered flock. And uh, we speak for those who cannot speak for themselves. That's why I am doing what I'm doing, and I need the support of everybody to up the penalty for Companion animal abuse in the state of Ohio. We're behind you here. We're with you twelve sixty for absolutely, uh, for sure, for sure. Well, um, I want to talk about another uh, another uh, thing that uh, you've done so many things in your broadcast career. Talk about your experience with the Cleveland Browns. Yeah, I was a, a statistician for forty three years. I think I got out just in time. <laughs> <laughs> so it seems. I'll tell you, I'm so old. I saw the first Browns game. You probably weren't there. August of uh, 1946. Uh, yep. At the Rubber Bowl in Akron, they for 20 years opened the season, preseason at the Rubber Bowl, and uh, so I still have the. My mom may have ditched them, but I have the tickets from that first Browns game in 1946. My goodness. And Otto Graham couldn't take him in. They left it up to Cliff Lewis his backup, and he took him in for a touchdown against the Brooklyn Football Dodgers. Dodgers. Mm -hmm. You remember that? I do. My, uh, <laughs> I, was, I was schooled on that by my father. Um, oh, I was going to say. We had, we had the old programs that in, in their, their first ever game, uh, yeah. the Miami Seahawks and, oh, and all those yeah. teams. And, there was their opener. Uh -huh. uh -huh. The Los Angeles Dons and the, the, Brooklyn, yeah, the Brooklyn Dodgers, as you mentioned, and uh, yeah, all those old teams in the uh, All-American Football Conference. But uh, that was so. You so it could be argued that uh, you've seen probably more Browns games than anyone else. Oh, I probably have, and uh, I was a football nut in high school, green high. Now I was a tailback and a single wing. That's how long ago I played football. <laughs> but uh, no, I love all sports. If the ball's moving, I'll watch it. You and me both. Until it stops. And it's it's hard to be a fan in this town, as we all know. Yeah, but we <laughs> but we are diehards, aren't we? Yes, we are. Oh, Absolutely. Dick, we have a gentleman here, Gary Lee. And he has written a song for you. Yeah. And I asked him if he knew the Woolly Bear song. Oh, okay. Woolly Bear, oh, here we go. Woolly Bear, let's all go to the festival. Take it. All right, just a minute. All right. Hang on. the cable plug in. I don't Is he know. good? Where's Sam? I don't oh. know. Oh. I don't know where to plug in. We're working on some things technically. Are you guys this, here tomorrow? This place is just, this place and and, and our it booth is, is just jammed right with rappers. We've wonderful. got so many people here. We got folks outside taking pictures. We've got like 85 people here in our little studio okay. uh, annex, as it were, and uh, we're all trying to like maneuver and not run into and run over each each and every person. We have Ray King out here taking video of us, so you get to see all this craziness online. Okay, here's a brand new song. Um, it's not my own melody. Here we go. Okay. Make it a sub for you. Here we go. All right. Here we go. Gary Lee, folks. Woolly bear. Oh, my little woolly bear. I think that's been taken. <laughs> we'll be true to you. We love to have you round. All off, off the ground There's even a festival <laughs> That we give to you Dick 
God, it will be there With his different colored hair <laughs> But he'll be there everywhere They're just for you Everybody say Terrific. Fitting, a, a fitting tribute to oh, a oh, broadcasting oh. legend. Oh, great stuff. Oh. Dick, you have a ton of people out here that I think are dying to meet you, so we're going to let oh, you go. I'll be down there. I'm selling t-shirts and stuff for the animals. It'll be on the right wall as you go down Definitely. there. Exactly. Definitely. So, you guys, he's going to be down at his table. He's got a ton of stuff. We've been with him uh, down at the table. And trust me, you want to talk to this man. He is an icon and a living legend here in the Cleveland area. Dick Gutter, thanks Dick, so much thank for joining you us. Thank you so much. We thank you. Appreciate I it. appreciate that. Are you going to be here tomorrow? We are. Oh, we yeah. are. Yeah. Well, Luke's okay. at 1260 online here yeah. today and tomorrow. We're here till 7 tonight, okay. till uh, 11 to 4 tomorrow. Looking forward to it. And um, we're going to let Dick go sign some autographs. And right now, some more music. It's the Monkees. I'm a believer here on Wixie.